The Louvre Museum in Paris is perhaps the most famous art gallery in the world. In 2010, I took a gaggle of junior high students with me from Alberta to Paris. And if they can appreciate the beauty and significance of the Louvre, so can you. Let's explore this amazing museum in my fun flashback video. The Louvre Museum was just one of many incredible stops we had on our 2010 Europe tour. The students and I traveled from Alberta to London, England, then took the channel to Paris, France, then did a Eurorail voyage to Florence, Assisi, and Rome in Italy. It was a whirlwind adventure, and I'd love to share more of it with you in the future. We arrived at the Louvre early in the morning on a weekday to avoid any huge lineups. Our tour leader was in charge of tickets, so I can't tell you the specifics of that, but we didn't wait long to access the museum. Entrance to the beautiful courtyard was free, so that's where we hung out while Lisa, our guide, ensured our museum access. Some of the kids passed the time by chasing birds. Before letting us set out in our pre-made groups, Lisa distributed scavenger hunt papers highlighting some of the museum's top sites in a logical and easy to follow path. This way we wouldn't get lost in the massive palace turned museum with its over 65,000 square feet of permanent exhibit space. We began by going through the medieval section of the Louvre exploring the actual foundation of the original castle, built in the 12th century by King Philip Augustus. A replica of what the original castle used to look like is found here, and you can easily see how much the Louvre has expanded over the years. Besides the ancient foundations, corniced hallways, and frescoed ceilings, there's plenty to see at the Louvre. It's impossible to see it all in one visit, but I'll point out some of the more famous pieces that are worth a peek. Venus de Milo is possibly one of the world's most famous sculptures, known for her armless state of disrepair. Created in ancient Greece somewhere between 130 and 100 BC, she looks pretty good for her age. Standing at the top of a grand staircase is another noteworthy sculpture, the Winged Victory of Samothrace, or the Nike of Samothrace. This headless woman used to have a noggin and was made to represent the Greek goddess of victory, Nike. One last sculpture of note is the incredibly romantic Psyche Revived by Cupid's Kiss by sculptor Antonio Canova. This piece, made in 1777, shows Cupid rescuing Psyche from the underworld. There's a whole angry mother-in-law Greek myth here, but it all ends happily, I can assure you. There are thousands of other equally incredible sculptures to be found in the Louvre. These are just a few of my favorites. More than sculptures, however, the Louvre is better known for its massive collection of paintings. None are more famous than Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa, a surprisingly small portrait for so large a reputation. But do I dare say, the Mona Lisa is a little vanilla when you see some of the other paintings in the Louvre. Paintings that have deeper historical significance or just really colorful backstories. Allow me to explain myself before you think I'm a Mona Lisa hater. Take for example the giant masterpiece by Eugene Delacroix entitled The Death of Sardanopolis. This gory painting shocked viewers when it was first presented at the Paris Salon in 1828 because of how violent the scene was. Multiple nude women are being murdered amidst the destruction of the last king of Assyria, Sardanopolis. Lots of skin, death, and decadence in this one. Or how about the piece by Theodore Jericho called The Raft of the Medusa? The painting made a heavy-handed political statement 
and shows a real-life event in gruesome detail. It shows the survivors of a French shipwreck, all lower-class sailors, being left to starve to death on a raft before being rescued at sea. The painting implied major incompetence on behalf of the captain, and apparently caused quite the scandal. The work Grande Odalisque by Ong caused all sorts of scandal too. Not because she was naked, but because her body was just all wrong. Choosing style over anatomical correctness, Ong painted this concubine with at least five extra vertebrae, one massively long arm, and a booty that would be physically unattainable in real life. Is this the first case of Photoshop? Many paintings tie directly into French history, such as Liberty Leading the People, which shows the symbolic figure of Liberty leading the French Revolution. Or there's the Coronation of Napoleon, which is a huge, massive canvas 10 meters wide, showing Emperor Napoleon being crowned in Notre Dame. There is a replica painting of this piece hanging in the Palace of Versailles, created by the same artist. It is identical in every way, despite being painted by memory, except for one aspect. Napoleon's favorite sister is dressed in pink rather than blue so that she stands out more. Speaking of Napoleon, there is an entire area of the Louvre called Napoleon's Apartments, but these are named after Napoleon III, who lived in the Richelieu wing for a time. These apartments are lush, luxurious, and glamorous, and definitely worth a stroll. If you're into royalty like that, then don't miss out on the French crown jewels, at least what's left of them after years of bloody revolutions and the fall of a monarchy. Located in the Galerie de Paulin, you can see a select few pieces that put your own bling to shame. And of course, no visit to the Louvre is complete without stopping to marvel at the Grand Pyramid, located above ground in the Louvre's courtyard, and the Pyramid in Versailles made so famous by Dan Brown's The Da Vinci Code. Try as you may, you just can't see it all in the Louvre unless you have a couple of weeks to spare. Hopefully this video can help you plan a route through the museum to see some of the more prominent pieces. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a friendly thumbs up and a comment. What's your favorite piece in the Louvre? Did I miss it? To anyone new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. Ring that bell so you can be notified about any new videos I publish.